Hello everyone, I'm Hugo. And I'm Jake, and you can't keep us down, motherfuckers. <laughs> and this is the Bible Reloaded, we're back to do, finally, thank you all for being so patient, an update on our ongoing lawsuit against David Rich Cristiano at 5 and 2 Pictures. If you don't know what's going on with that, here's a link to a previous video that explains the situation, but all you really need to know is they did some false DMCAs against us, and currently we are in the middle of litigation against them, because what they did was bullshit. So, it's been like a month and a half, maybe two months since we started our GoFundMe, and thank you all, by the way, for helping us raise for our legal fund. Right now, I think we're at like $81,000 out of the 100000 That's our goal, and that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you all so and much that for was, that. And that was from August 17th until yeah. now. And we're recording on October 2nd. You'll see it October 3rd if you watch the first day. Um, that's amazing. Uh, 5,000 people... Uh, plus have, have donated, uh, including people like Philip DeFranco and some peers in the group like Logic specifically. Logic, by the way, big shout out to that guy. Um, not just monetary support, which of course he did do, but uh, he's just a cool guy. Him and I talk on and off every once in a while. Um, I genuinely appreciate that guy's support. So uh, yeah. if you're not subscribed to Logic, uh, I don't know, do a thing, I guess. <laughs> but... Uh, Anyways, uh, into the body of this, uh, we do have a, this is a huge update. We are serving papers. Uh, we are starting officially, technically, the lawsuit, the big, now they are going to be aware. Uh, and you can actually, if you are interested, you can read the entire legal document uh, in the description. There's a link. And uh, it's all very boring. But if you're interested, whatever, I don't care. Do that. We're going to go over it a little bit here, but uh, sure. a lot of it's stuff we've already told you. So again, if you want more specific details, I would go to the uh, this video right here, and um, which is also available in the description, to get kind of the idea of, wh of what exactly happened. And I guess first thing off the bat, we are being represented by Michael Lee, who is one of the uh, two um, um, lawyers that started FUPA, but because this is not a defense, then we can't really tap into that, if that makes sense, because this is... This is us being like, nah, fuck you. We're suing you. It's not a countersuit. So that's that's why FUPA doesn't doesn't fall to us, if that makes sense. But uh, this is one of the guys from that. It's the same lawyer helping represent H3H3 uh, over there, which is, uh, you know, Ethan and Gila. Great peeps. Great peeps. Vape Nash. <laughs> you see that video where you wore like a hundred beanies? I love Ethan. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> so here's actually the sort of the body of, of it. It's a pretty long legal document. Legal documents tend to be uh, sort of long, and they go on longer than need be, but they're legal documents. So I guess here we go. These are the actual factual allegations. This basically spells out in broad terms what the case is about, what happened, uh, and who did what. So because we got uh, a rough copy and they're still working on grammatical and spelling errors and stuff, they got to check that. If there's any in there, don't worry. It's not in the actual legal document. This was a rough cut, and that's why. So here we go. So this one goes, on April 8th, 2016, Plaintiffs, which is us, published a 41 minute, 51 second video of The Bible Reloaded on YouTube entitled, Atheist Watch, A Matter of Faith. You guys remember that well. It will henceforth be known as the first video. The first video consists of a review and critique of a movie called A Matter of Faith. During the course of the video, while providing comedy, commentary, and critique of the movie, Plaintiffs show still shots of the movie and short clips of the film. Plaintiff's commentary is focused primarily on the religious concept of evolution versus creationism. I'm sure you've seen uh, uh, that review. You know that it falls well with un well under fair use. Um, so this is the first one that they flagged the first time around. The one that we had ended up beating. Uh, yeah. if you remember that? The, uh, we had to make two videos on this, um, where the first one was, where's the fair use? And then, uh, we had to do the, uh, how we got our groove back video. Um, now bear in mind, these two videos didn't include any content from, you know, the Cristiano film group. It was just Hugo and I talking, you know, about the bullshit that we had to go through. Uh, those are also referenced in this document, uh, but we're not going to go over that because I just gave you the gist. You don't need any more of that. The document continues on. Uh, on or about April 20th, 2016, plaintiffs, that's us, were notified by YouTube LLC of a takedown notice submitted by CFG uh, demanding that the first video be removed on YouTube pursuant to Section 512 of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, DMCA. Yeah, if anyone doesn't know, sometimes people ask us what DMCA stands for. Digital Millennium Copyright Act. I think Bill Clinton signed that in, so 
Cracker Jack job, Bill. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it made sense at the time, but it didn't no, really... I, I, I like, it. like, over time, obviously, digital content has changed dramatically right. from 1999. Right. And arguably, because fair use is part of the copyright code, it shouldn't be an issue. It's just that it's so blatantly abused nowadays, and it's so easy to right. do on YouTube. But anyway. Yeah. The first DMCA notice claims that the first video contains unauthorized use of copyrighted A Matter of Faith, a motion picture, and therefore the first video is infringing on the copyrights to A Matter of Faith. Defendants were later informed that the first DMCA notice was submitted by Pirate Guy on behalf of CFG. A true and correct copy of the first DMCA notice is attached here as Exhibit A. Again, uh, like papers, if you ever done like a research paper, there's basically an appendix with stuff and that's what the evidence is. At the very end, they show... Uh, screenshots and stuff of the DMCA notices that we got. It continues, Upon information and belief, CFG, which is Cristiano Film Group, uh, is the film production company that created, produced, and released A Matter of Faith. CFG is owned and operated by brothers Rich and Dave Cristiano. Besides A Matter of Faith, CFG creates, produces, and releases other religious-themed content, including theatrical feature films and websites promoting those films between 1988 and 2014. CFG released feature-length films, including Crime of the Age, End of the Harvest, Time Changer, and A Matter of Faith, all of which we reviewed, which is why they uh, put it in here. Um, I thought this was interesting, because I've never done this, uh, but part of the interesting part was, upon information and belief, CFG is blank. Like, I thought I thought that was kind of an interesting way to go to... <laughs> We believe that they do this, but I mean, like, it's not our fault if they end up not being the people responsible for this. <laughs> I imagine a bunch of lawyers writing this, but if you imagine the writing of this, them in combat, it's just them standing ass to ass, always just rotating, making sure no one's ass is uncovered. <laughs> Further, on or about April 20th, 2016, a response to the final DMCA notice, YouTube LLC removed public access to plaintiff's first video, therefore users of YouTube and subscribers to the Bible Reloaded were no longer permitted to access and watch the first video. That's just YouTube taking it down uh, pursuant to the DMCA notice received. The detrimental effects of the first DMC notice on plaintiffs were realized immediately, aside from the fact that plaintiffs were forced to expend extensive time and effort responding to the first DMCA notice, mostly Hugo, by the way, yep. although I, I played a small part. Not a fun uh, week. Not yeah. A fun week. <laughs> the first video was not publicly accessible for a period of six days. As a result, plaintiffs were deprived of a significant amount of advertising revenue from performance of the first video. They'll go on to add how important the first few days after an upload actually is, and it's true. You guys know how much content is in your subscription feeds if you subscribe to even, like, five accounts. Yeah. Like, it, it's just... We upload three or four times a week, depending mm -hmm. on what's going on, and we'll we'll bury ourselves, let alone yeah. the other people in your feeds. So yeah, it, it is very important, and we don't know how well that movie would have done. It it it. Uh, uh, I gotta imagine it would have done a little better. Yeah, for it's sure. it's funny because our movie reviews are by far our most viewed thing. Like by yeah. far, I think our most viewed video now is a movie review, and it's almost at 600,000 views or it's something Jesus, like that. It's Jesus camp, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Additionally, during this period, YouTube prohibited plaintiffs from uploading new videos longer than 15 minutes, affecting the majority of their videos and causing an estimated loss of approximately 120,000 views on YouTube. This is important because for a couple of reasons, actually. One, if you watch our channel regularly, you know we rarely upload anything shorter than 15 minutes. Mm. Uh... Secondly, I don't know if you guys know how YouTube's ad revenue system works. It's complicated, probably more so than it needs to be. But <laughs> uh, ad revenue isn't just based on views. It's based on length of time that the video is. For instance, if you get 100,000 100, views on a video that's two minutes long versus a video that's 50 minutes long, if they have the same amount of views, the 50-minute one still makes more money because YouTube does a thing where they're trying to keep people on the site longer, so you get uh, incentivized to make longer content. Now, it's, called, it's called retention. Sure. And so th this is basically um, because creators in the past, and this is kind of before our time a little bit, um, you know, something viral would go um, like, like a cat video or something, and we get like 50 million views, and they'll still make some money on it, but someone that churns out content every day... Like, really genuinely good t content. Like, you're not sticking around on YouTube for an hour long watching a shit TED Talk. <laughs> but you will... You, but, but if it's good content, you'll stick around. Sure. And that's just how it is. Yeah. And so they decided to kind of switch it over to... Well, if you go viral, sure, you'll get paid. 
but uh, think Gangnam style. <laughs> um, but uh, if people are churning out good content and maybe get half the views, but it's three times the length, well, yeah, that, that's more opportunity uh, for both advertiser um, uh, uh, exposure, I guess. And also just it shows that people are willing to stick around on your channel, meaning they're more likely to click back again, meaning that YouTube gets to make money and advertisers gets to make money. And YouTubers get to make a living. This yeah. is it, It's a win-win, so that's a, that's a cool way. But they fucked us. Yeah. Pretty hard during that period of time. For the record, that's not why we make long content either, by the way. We're just really long-winded assholes who don't know when to shut up. Like, that's... Yeah, that wasn't always the case. Like, when we had started this, that wasn't the case. Yeah. Uh, so. It just kind of ended up being that, which benefited us a little bit. Yeah. But uh, anyways, because plaintiffs were not allowed to upload videos longer than 15 minutes, they were also unable to participate in live stream fundraising events on the website Patreon.com, causing an estimated loss of another X page views on that Website, which is also true, and this is highlighted for reasons I'm unaware of. It is very important, so maybe that's it. Um, but uh, Michael didn't tell me, so I have no idea. <laughs> but yeah, that was that was shitty. We had to actually, if we wanted to do a live stream, it would have had to been through uh, TQR, or we could have done Unpop, or one of our, you know, the other channels. But um, I think that's been changed now. I think it needs two strikes to get to that point. Yeah, but at the time, that was not the case. So. Correct. On or about April 21st, 2016, Jake contacted the Cristiano Films Group by means of the company's account at 5 and 2 pictures on the Twitter.com website. <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> Legal documents make me laugh. I don't know why. Anyway. <laughs> Informing them of the false nature of the DMCA notice and demanding that the first DMCA notice be retracted, defendants failed to respond to this message and merely blocked plaintiffs from subsequently contacting them through the Twitter account. This was after, by the way, I had already... Uh, contacted them on via email and they had stonewalled us so right and um i gotta imagine that's pirate guy it's pirate uh, guy, i I, sure. I have no i have no actual confirmation but the attitude is shared <laughs> between the email and the twitter account so i'm, I'm gonna throw that out there because uh the christiano bro we did talk to seemed uh at least willing to talk mm-hmm Moving on. At the same time, plaintiffs, which was Hugo, communicated through email with defendants regarding the first DMCA notice. Plaintiffs advised defendants that use of the still shots and brief video clips of the matter of faith in the first video was in a limited capacity and for the purpose of review, and such use of copyrighted work should be protected under fair use as defined by 17 U.S.C. Simoleon 107. <laughs> <laughs> I think of this section. I, think I that's guarantee section. that has a real name. I don't know what I am. This is it's times like this when I am so glad we didn't become lawyers. We would be terrible lawyers. I think I feel like we'd be filled in to what that means if we were lawyers. No, I don't have enough faith in <laughs> me to believe that's true. <laughs> Defendants adamantly refused to retract the first DMCA notice with YouTube without plaintiffs first agreeing to permanently delete the first video so that it would never be seen again on YouTube. Plaintiffs refused to comply with the unreasonable demand and submitted a counter notification to YouTube over the first DMCA notice. And you know, we're not the only ones this has happened to. I know at least of two other YouTubers personally that when they go and try and defend their video and say it's under fair use, uh, the, the Cristiano Films group, whether it be pirate guy allegedly or anyone else at the organization they always start off with delete the video and we'll remove the strike so just for reference we're not the only ones that's happened to we are one of the only ones that i think said no yeah so that's nice good for us good sometimes it's good to hugo, be a hard-headed jerk hugo dropped his nutsack on the table and was like nah bitch yeah. that's not true i mean he may have at home like on his desk well, that's but just maybe that, he just does that anyway. Yeah. Uh, controlling for all of the things, that was a pretty normal day. I wouldn't consider that special to that occasion. <laughs> <laughs> On April 25th, 2016, plaintiffs published a 13-minute, 15-second video of the Bible Reloaded on YouTube entitled, Hey, Scotty, Lawsuit Man, which will be henceforth known as second video. And it was 13 minutes, 15 seconds, because we were still stuck at 15 minutes. In the second video, plaintiffs merely discussed what had happened to the first video and the first DMCA notice, their communications with defendants, and fair use. The second video does not contain any still shots or video from CFG's motion pictures. Yeah, that's a big deal. We talked about this in the initial videos of this, but if you hadn't seen those, yes, the DMCA videos of us later on, and this is one of them that's just saying when we posted it, that contained none of their content, it's... You couldn't get more false DMCAE than that. I don't even have to claim fair use. All I have to say is, nah. 
<laughs> nah. None of I'm your pretty shit's sure that in will there. Be, that nah shows up in the legal document later <laughs> somewhere. Nah. On April 25th, 2016, following the release of the second video, plaintiffs received an email from Dave, Dave Cristiano, one of the brothers, praising the publicity that the first video had brought CFG's <laughs> motion pictures and mentioning that another person is doing, brackets, the shutdown for us. This other person was later identified as Selva Pirate Guy. <laughs> In subsequent emails on the same day and in response to Hugo explaining to Dave the doctrine of fair use, Dave agreed, this all makes sense, and that's a quote from an email that Hugo had received, by the way, yep, have and, all stated those that he, <laughs> and, and stated that he had asked Pirate Guy to revoke the first DMCA notice. Hugo also exchanged several emails with Pirate Guy on the same day as well concerning retraction of the first DMCA notice. That was a big, that was a clusterfuck of a day. Yeah, yeah, but I don't know. I'm man. When we had to go, I had to go back because I still have all those emails. There were like fifty something emails I had to send to people. Mm -hmm. Man, that was a frustrating conversation. I cannot believe I got through that. <laughs> You're not one to really like bear down and and do that. I don't know what was happening in my life, but that me. day I was just not having any shit. You were. I, I like, even told you like, uh, okay, like you could just. It's fine. We'll nah. figure it out. And you're like, nah, fuck this guy. Rage. I, it worked out. I'm a pretty bad. You were super mad. I'm I'm a pretty complacent guy most of the time. But yeah. uh, every once in a while, I'll get a I'll get a <laughs> justice. I don't know if a boner is the right word. I'll get a I'll get a justice uh, 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 inclination in my penis. Inclination. I feel like maybe. No, justice your man, boner covers your it. man. Your man clit hardens. Yeah. Just so just the tip. The the shaft is flaccid. For the record, we may end up appearing in a courtroom and talking to a judge. Aren't you excited for that? I feel like we have to limit the dick jokes there, but not not on this day. No, today's fine. Uh <laughs> Exhibit um, Z. D's nuts. <laughs> On April 26, 2016, plaintiffs finally received notice from YouTube LLC that the copyright claim against the first video had been released. And that was after a long, ugh, just conversation with the pirate guy. It's the worst. And he didn't want to do it. Dave was the one to finally be like, no, you have to release it. Yeah. Anyway. On April 27, 2016, plaintiffs published a 36-minute, 45-second video of The Bible Reloaded on YouTube entitled Strike, How We Got Our Groove Back, known as The Third Video. In the third video, plaintiffs solely discussed what had happened most recently concerning the retraction of the first video and the first DMCA notice, their communications with the defendants, and fair use. The third video also does not contain any still shots or video from any of CFG's motion pictures. And in that video, <laughs> we actually we covered a lot of those emails. Not all of them, because it was too many to go over, and that video was already almost 40 minutes long. Uh, right. You get it, though. If you want to see any of those emails, go check out that video. Also, you get to hear Hugo be super ragey. Yeah. Moving on. Between May 20th, 2016 and June 24th, 2016, plaintiffs published... Published? Plaintiffs published three additional episodes of The Bible Reloaded on YouTube offering criticism and commentary about different CFG films. The first one was uh, published 42 minutes and 13 seconds long, and it was of Time Changer. It consists of a review of critique, blah, blah, blah. You get it. The next one is going to be End of Harvest, same spiel. And the last one is going to be Crime of the Age, same spiel. Basically, Man, we didn't contain any video. We did stills and audio only, um, and you guys remember that. I think we did we did a little bit of audio for uh, Crime, Crime of the Age. Age. That was because the that was, was, that was so bad. when they 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 sang and it was great. Um, which again still falls under fairies. Doesn't matter. Despite this, defendants' attempts to silence plaintiffs' critique of CFG's motion pictures was far from over. I didn't know law documents could be so foreboding. I feel like I'm. I feel this is right. this is almost the Star Wars Episode Five end moment. <laughs> Looking yeah, into that galaxy, a, it was a little bit of a clapback. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, August 15th, 2016, plaintiffs were again notified by YouTube LLC of another round of DMCA takedown notices that were filed by defendants. Defendants claimed that the fourth video, fifth video, and sixth video infringed on the copyright for defendants' motion pictures. This claim is frivolous, as these videos contain only still shots from CFG's motion pictures. This use is clearly protected 
by the doctrine of fair use. Equally concerning, although I think maybe most concerning, is the plaintiffs were notified by YouTube LLC that DMCA takedowns were also issued against the second video and the third video. In these videos, plaintiffs solely discuss the takedown of the first video, their communications with defendants, and fair use. The second video and third video do not contain any still shots or video from any of CFG's motion pictures. That one is just so blatant, and it's just garbage. Like, that's just... You're human filth if you're like... <laughs> If you're like, yeah, these guys are wrong for talking about us, fuck you. Yeah. Yeah. In a knowing, willful, and fraudulent claim. Now, those words are important in this because it was willful. It was knowing. Defendants incredulously claimed in a DMCA takedown that the second video contained infringing use of the motion picture entitled Second Glance. This was an outright lie made in the DMCA takedown notice and represented to YouTube LLC. Not a single video or image of Second Glance was contained in the second video. In fact, Second Glance was never even mentioned in the second video. <laughs> And you have the same exact thing in this next section, which says the same words, but it's about Matter of Faith and the third video. Yeah, which was not uh, the review of Matter of Faith. That was uh, one right. of the other ones it, that had nothing to do the with first, it. The first video was the review of Matter of yeah. Faith. The third video was the gro how we got our groove back, saying how the strike was resolved. Yeah. But they claimed that we used the, f the full movie of Matter of Faith. Uh, where it wasn't even mentioned. Yeah. It's it's just craziness. And you can see that, by the way, if you go to the website and want to read this entire document, uh, one of the exhibits, I, I forget which one, is uh, actually showing them claiming that those videos are that. Them saying, right. second glance is this, and it's the whole video, and this one is matter of faith, and it's the whole video. Liar. Liar. <laughs> Liar. In sum, following the resolution of the first DMCA notice, defendants submitted a total of five additional DMCA takedowns to YouTube LLC, claiming that CFG's motion pictures were infringed, uh, known as the five subsequent DMCA notices. The statement contained in the five subsequent DMCA notices are totally false. Can it, is it an illegal document? Can you get one of those clap emojis? <laughs> I, I would like that there. <laughs> Are you listening, Michael? Put a clap emoji right there. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. The five subsequent DMCA notices were submitted frivolously, harassingly, and completely without merit. In fact, YouTube explicitly acknowledged that use of CFG's motion pictures in the second video, the third video, the fourth video, the fifth video, and the sixth video, if any, fell under fair use and as such refused to remove the content. Now, this is the most damning, in my opinion, because if you know anything about YouTube's track record with fair use, they don't <laughs> give a shit. Ever. They've uh, actually, ever. recently I've heard they've gotten a little bit better, which is nice, but the fact that even YouTube, the master of sucking Viacom's dick, looked at this and went, oh, no, that's fine. That's, there you go. I'm, I, see, I'm... <laughs> I'm less worried about a judge looking at our videos and considering them fair use or not than I am YouTube. That's the point YouTube has gotten to. That I'm like, oh, <laughs> someone working at YouTube is going to look at our video and decide if it's fair use. Ugh. And then go, oh, this person who's trained in the law, they're going to look at it? All right. <laughs> not worried about it. It goes on, the five subsequent DMCA notices accusing plaintiffs of mass copyright infringement have unjustly interfered with plaintiffs' ongoing business relations with YouTube to plaintiffs' severe and continuing detriment, meaning that we lost money, probably subscribers from the uh, um, exposure that those usually bring us, uh, and of course, the, the, the money that we make. This is our job, this is how we feed our families. So uh, yeah, it's a big fucking deal. According to 17 U.S.C. Section 512, a notification of claimed infringement must include a statement that the information in the notification is accurate and under penalty of perjury that the complaining party is authorized to act on behalf of the owner of exclusive right that is allegedly infringed. This next one is important. Pirate Guy, as the signatory acting as agent for CFG, did in fact submit the first DMCA notice and the five subsequent DMCA notices 
none of which comply with the aforementioned requirement, thus committing perjury as defined by 18 U.S.C. Weird Symbol 1621. A true and correct copy of the copyright infringement notification confirmation in connection with the five subsequent DMCA notices implicating Pirate Guy is attached here too as Exhibit B. Boom! Yeah. Exhibit B is, uh, we got the, uh, the email and YouTube that YouTube sends you when you yeah. get one of these things. Uh, by the way, if you're a content creator, emails from YouTube is horrifying. Yeah. You don't want them. No. Ever. Um, and uh, we, we showed that before. Um, again, if you, if you go on the website, you can see this all. Note, plaintiffs do not have access to a copyright infringement notification confirmation in connection to the first DMCA notice as at the time of that notice. YouTube's LLC protocol did not include providing this information. Yeah, that's just the that's way they started doing copyright change, so we didn't actually have the digital signature at first. It still had, he was connected to it, and we have other ways of, he, he I mean, he's their DMCA guy. But the second- Well, we had, we, we had their, it, it, it gave us the right. email that you contacted him yes. with that he uses, so yes, but- like as far as the filing, it doesn't. We don't have his name confirmation on our copy of it. Yeah, but the, I assume theirs does. Yeah, but the next five absolutely had his digital sig- digital signature on there. Right, it had his name and and the address of the business and all that stuff yeah. on it that we did not share with you. Defendant's actions in filing the first DMC notice and five subsequent DMCA notices constitute an egregious display of bad faith. Defendants clearly choose to selectively target unfavorable reviews of their films, such as plaintiffs' videos, as evidenced by the blatant lack of enforcement resulting in extensive online availability of defendants' films published by third parties, meaning people have wholesale uploaded their videos onto YouTube yeah. or, or given good reviews of these, like usually Christians, and they're not taken down. They're still available on YouTube. Honestly, if you want to go, you could probably type in Matter of Faith or uh, Crime of the Age, or any of those, you could probably find a full-length version of, of, of their video on there, which is copyright infringement. Yeah, I actually, that actually is. I would be on their side if they were taking those people down. Because you can't just upload a movie onto YouTube. I know of four separate videos, personally. I'm not going to share links or anything, obviously, because that's not cool. But I know of four separate videos that are Cristiano Films Group films on YouTube in full, that have been there since before our five DMCA notices, and they continue to be up there until this day. So they're not trolling looking for actual copyright infringers. They're trying to silence people who don't agree with them. Because yeah. literally, all you'd have to type in is the name of the movie, and it's right there. I got curious. I searched because I was like, I wonder if any other movies are on here in full. There are. The, the, like, the longest one I found has been up there for like four or five months. Craziness. It's ridiculous. Anyways. And this is the exact conduct for which defendants attempted to stop plaintiffs from engaging in. It is obvious that plaintiffs were unduly uh, singled out by defendants in a malicious attempt to stifle their creative liberties in favor of defendants' own interests. These unwarranted actions have caused plaintiffs irreparable damages. And then it goes on um, to uh, talk about the relief. It doesn't have any, like, monetary numbers, if that's what you're interested in. Um, It just says, hey... Uh, we think this is bullshit, and here's what we're looking for, and it, it outlines all of those. They're very boring to read, but you're, again, more, you're free to do so if you'd like to. I don't want to read them to you. Yeah. But I did find, um, that, uh, the, one of the last sections of this is called Prayer for Relief. I thought that was funny. I saw that too. I was like, eh, irony. <laughs> uh, hey, and it's actually real irony. Yeah. Take that Alanis Morissette. <laughs> It's like, uh, but yeah, you, it, that's as much as I can sing yeah. out of key before it becomes copyright infringement, see? I wasn't criticizing <laughs> bo- it, so not fair use. At the bottom of it, uh, you have the uh, exhibits. Yeah. You can look at all that if you want. Again, it's super boring, so uh, we basically went all over the juicy parts. Way to sell but, it. Uh, <laughs> I, well, I mean, I mean, it's a, it's oh, a it's legal a legal document. It's a legal document. I totally get it. It's, I thought it was very interesting, though, because I've never had experience with stuff like this before. Sure. It was interesting how they take an experience that I'm very familiar with because I was the main person to talk to them and put it into legal right. language. It's interesting. Sure. So, yeah. But anyway, thank you, everyone, again, who has supported us thus far. Uh, Again, if you have a YouTube channel or anything, please feel free to share this video or the original video talking about what happened with your subscribers. Uh, If you'd still like to, our GoFundMe is still up. We don't know how far this is going to go if they continue to try and file appeals on this or try and dismiss the case or whatever. We don't know what's going to happen. We have not hit our goal yet. We're actually $20,000 short. Yeah. Um, 
now we, we have obviously we have spent money from this so far um and by no means is it depleted but i we would not have been able to afford even the initial little bit of this at all without the help from the gofundme and you peoples uh you've been fantastic yes thank you uh, again if if you if you can uh, donate even uh, five dollars is the is the is the limit here. But uh, just sharing this video, sharing it around, sharing the GoFundMe link would would help. If we can get to the hundred thousand goal, um, I mean it's it's in the it's got to be close to in the bag. I gotta assume here if we can, as long as they don't outspend us in legal fees, basically. Yeah. That's really the only worry. And right now we're good as far as like the first little bit. But if this got deep. Uh, we would run out pretty quick yeah. because so, it, it, get, it gets expensive. Like I've cut bigger checks for this in my whole life than anything else. And I have a house and a car <laughs> and, and like a family. Like I, <laughs> so it, this is, this is crazy to me. Uh, so again, big thank you to everyone that even shared, commented, just viewed it, talked, even if you were against this, um, Fuck it. Thank you for at least at least hearing us out yeah. because I feel like this is important. And uh, for those of you who are against um, at least the crowdfunding aspect, we're going to fight for the right to uh, free speech and fair use whether you support it or not. Yeah. So, so uh, I keep saying thank yeah. you, but seriously, thanks, everyone. It's been it's been crazy. And honestly, I'm hoping out of this what's going to happen is we can make YouTube a better place, make when companies consider filing a dmca on a video that's a review or a criticism of their work maybe they'll think twice before they hit that button if we can get one corporate memo out at viacom <laughs> hey guys maybe, mm, maybe i'd be don't. happy but right i don't know just i'm sick of this stuff i'm glad we're moving forward at the end of the day you know what's funny today is supposedly i guess at least when you're listening to this uh, when they're supposed to get served. I don't know how they're doing it. I don't know if they're actually sending a person. More likely, they're going to do some sort of certified mail thing. I don't know. But mm -hmm. I wish so much I could be a fly on the wall when Dave or Rich get this notice and have to read this because I have nothing against them personally, but you're responsible for what your employees do as long as they're under <laughs> the umbrella of your company, guys. Yeah. I, do, yeah. I, don't want, I don't want them to stop making movies. I've had so much insurance. Have you seen Time Changer? It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's not it's not good. Not good. I love so, that uh, movie. I wish you would make a time changer too, but guess what? Now it's not going to happen cuz its budget is going to go into this lawsuit. <laughs> I didn't like Time Changer. Oh, I, I, I liked it for good. the cringe. Oh yeah, that's I'm not saying I like it cuz it's, it's like it's, it's brilliantly written. Uh-oh, right, we, crit yeah. we criticized it in their movies in the video going to get DMCA'd. Anyway, that would be amazing. I wouldn't be mad. I'd be like, "All right." Here we go. Okay, I guess we're uh, adding this to the fucking complaint letter. Yeah. So yeah, this is it. Again, you can you can read that uh, down in the link below if you if you'd like. Um, you can definitely um, go to the GoFundMe, and even if you don't donate, I think just looking down and seeing some of the comments that people have made, or uh, just seeing maybe who's who's donated, like uh, Philip DeFranco has donated before. Yeah. And, uh, nice guy. You know, it's it, yeah. It's just been it's just been really cool. So thank you all for the support, whether it's been monetary or just the views. I know we say thank you a lot, but uh, usually we tell you to fuck off. So like, just enjoy it, okay? So thanks everyone. We'll update you as we can. But again, you know how long it took to update until this in legal matters. You can't jump the gun. You can't talk about things before you can talk right. about them. Basically. We had to wait. We had to wait for Michael's um permission, basically. Yeah. So uh so yeah uh, and obviously um, we don't want to give away strategy. We're like football coaches. We're playing 4D chess or 6D uh, uh, Plinko or 60. That just sounds like that just sounds like a Bukaki. 27D uh, Settlers of Catan. That's not a thing. Anyways. Uh, <laughs> Until next time, I'm, I'm Hugo. I'm Jake. And this has been the Bob Reloaded and it is on. <laughs>